Hey, I want to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Michael Lee on the line, and he's founder of Michael Lee Strategy. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, man. So I'm glad I like having a ringer on here today. I was doing some research on you and you're all over the place, whether it's Fox business. I mean, I can't, I can't even keep track of all the, all the media outlets. Like how, how do you do it, man? Tell me what's the secret. You know, uh, I'm really lucky. Uh, I, I, the stuff that they asked me about Fox, both from a financial perspective and the politics perspective, uh, I can talk about it for hours on end. And if they didn't ask me to go on TV, like I literally have no one to tell it to. So I'm very thankful. <laughs> so it's your creative outlet, man. I love it. This is great. And, uh, and uh, well, before we get uh, further along, cause I do want to talk about the micro cap conference. And of course we'll talk about Michael Lee strategy, but just to get us kicked off. We'll start this episode the way that we start them all with what we like to call our mission matters minute. So, Michael, our mission here is to amplify stories. We feel that amplifying stories that need to be heard, like that's what we're here to do. That's our mission. Michael, what mission matters to you? So for me, there's a lot of smart people out there that have worked very, very hard and have amassed uh, their life savings. Some, you know, doesn't really matter the number for everybody. It's significant to them. Uh, and this world of uh, financial products, financial services, all these different types of investments uh, can be confusing and overwhelming for a lot of people. And for mm. me, my mission is to give them, give these people peace and comfort uh, and clarity through my ability to communicate these sorts of uh, these sorts of concepts. So. Um, whether it's stocks or bonds or some sort of financial planning question, a very specific investment question, just you know, trying to make the complex simple, right? In a lot of cases in finance, um, you know, it, it, people in the financial services industry tend to have high pains of themselves and as a result tend to overcomplicate things that are not that complicated. So I, I you know, I, I just, I want to, <laughs> I want to do that in reverse so that, yeah. Uh, the the intimidation factor and make things easier so people can make better decisions and live a better life. Yeah, it's uh, distilling information and making something digestible so people know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> like, like that's a skill all in itself, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's you know that's kind of like uh, that's 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 how I make my living uh, on yeah. a daily basis, and that's like my firm's motto. You know, to, to provide comfort to clarity. Mm. Hmm. So we're we're both heading to the Microcap Conference. This will be my first time heading over there. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I've been doing some interviews to do the promo and you know tell my audience that we're heading out there. I know you you'll be out there as well. Um, what what drew you to the conference? Yeah. So I, I was invited to speak. I, I you know do fair like as we discussed. Um, hmm. I do a lot of Fox business. Um, do some other networks out there too. Uh, Fox would be the biggest, but I, I'm out there and I'm talking about a lot of different subject matter in the financial services industry. A hmm. bit of a diverse background uh, uh, on the Wall Street side, you know, working um, mostly with individuals, but also spending time uh, at Morgan Stanley and the institutional uh, sales department covering both equity and fixed income. Um, and then now on the RIA, uh, on the buy side, for you know, almost the last decade. So they, um, the Microcap Conference actually approached me, uh, the, the wonderful people organizing the event, and asked me to talk about how someone can add microcaps to a retiree portfolio. Um, this is right up my alley, literally my yeah. day job. So mm -hmm. uh, I was very excited to get the invitation. I've not been to Atlantic City in a while, so we're off to the races. Yeah. Uh, so with your back, I mean, a lot of different ways you could have gone. Um, what attracted you to the RIA space specifically? You know, I, I had a couple of fantastic um, institutional fixed income accounts mm -hmm. at Morgan Stanley. But uh, being that I was I love more the, in the middle By the way, I love the RIA space. Just throwing it out there, Michael. I, lo I love <laughs> people that are out there fighting towards. I'm just curious in your story. Like, I, I'm a big fan of the space. And what, so I'm just curious, what drew you to it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sitting there at Morgan Stanley and saying, hey, 
um, you know, to kind of develop myself up the institutional securities ladder mm. is, is not, it's not necessarily uh, the best career decision for me personally. You know, I, I was not, um, I was in the middle markets group. So commission only sales guy, not sitting on a desk. Um, so to kind of either get other large accounts or develop that business into something meaningful uh, in a world where commission dollars just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, margins are tighter, cost of capital is going up, regulatory is going up. Like that's just not an industry that's growing uh, where the private wealth side with the baby boomers retiring um, and a lot of money coming into markets from all over the world. Well, there's a ton of growth there. And not only is there a ton of growth there, um, being on the RAA side of the equation where you can be an independent advisor, um, the ability to access technology, you know, the best technology in the industry is actually lies on the independent side, be, the RAA side, because you don't need to roll something out for 40,000 people or 20,000 people simultaneously. Yeah. Um, and with, you know, right, right about when I left Morgan Stanley, it became, went to the RAA side in 2014 was, you know, not the beginning of fintech, but right as the hockey stick was starting. Mm. And so the technology that I have at my fingertips, uh, the way that I, I'm able to service clients and do things and act as a true fiduciary, it, it's just a much better way of doing business um, and being, being in a position where you sit on the same side of the table as a client and your conflicts mm -hmm. of interest, are, it, it's not that they're non-existent. But they're minute compared to when I used to do the exact same thing for individuals at Morgan Stanley at Merrill Lynch. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a, you know that resonates with clients. Um, you know, to me, like you're a sales guy, you want to sell the best stuff. So being on the RAA side, like you're, you're just you're you're selling the best stuff. Um, you, you're just in a much better place to service clients, grow your business. Uh, and do things the way that you want, where I can now deal with the people that I want to deal with, not, you know, some client that the manager hands me that you can't really hand back. So it's mm. uh, it's a lot of fun. It's exciting. The industry keeps changing, keeps getting better. Uh, so, I'm uh, yeah, I'm super yeah. pumped to get out of bed every day at work. Yeah, that the evolution is just to me it's wild. Like if I think about like and and even let's say age wise, I haven't you know I was I was in that business almost fourteen years prior to just finance in general and wealth management prior to being in media. Now, geez, going on eight years, Michael, where does this time fly? I don't know, man. But but uh, I just seeing the evolution from where I started and like what's happening now and still having I don't manage money anymore, but just I still have you know I interview individuals like yourself who are doing that on a day-to-day -day basis or working with managers either way um, so that we're a, I, I still have insight into it. And the evolution to me is just, it's just wild. I think that so many things are um, over time just becoming more and more um, investor centric and which you think that, you know, they would be always, but it takes, it's an evolution of an industry, just like anything, tech, the internet, whatever we want to say, like there's an evolution to getting to where we want to be in day by day. I feel like individuals like you are out there, you know, fighting the fight to get us closer there. So um, it's all good stuff there. Michael, I want to I want to shift focus here a little bit and let's get a little bit of market talk in. So we're, you know, 20 for context for everybody that's watching this. And uh, um, we're, you know, January 2024. Um, broad question and take it where you want to, Michael. But what should be on investors mind going into 2024? Artificial intelligence. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like and so, you know, last year, you know, the year of 2023 was a market year of the Magnificent Seven. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so your NVIDIA, Google, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Netflix, um, these stocks did spectacularly well. Uh, and so if you look at those, you know, those names versus, um, you, you know, so the S you know, the S&P seven, the magnificent seven versus the S&P four, 493, you actually had a market, the seven were up like 30 something percent and the S&P four or the S&P 493 was only up, uh, you know, four or five points. And I, I think what we have now is kind of a metamorphosis of what used to be a defensive stock and what is a defensive stock, because we exist in a slowing economy. Um, there, there is decent pockets here and there, but, uh, you know, manufacturing has been in a recession basically for 18 months. 
Uh, if you look at a chart of the leading economic indicators, the collapse of them from the spring of 2022 to now looks identical to the chart as 2020, 2008, and the year 2000. Um, all used car uh, auto loans, subprime auto loan, the default rate is at an all-time high. Uh, credit card defaults on an overall basis looks like a hockey stick in terms of the number of defaults and delinquencies. And then if you look at uh, credit card default rates outside the top 100 banks, it's the largest it's ever been. So there is an underlying economic weakness uh, that's out there in the economy, yet something crazy is going on with stocks like NVIDIA that are up hundreds of percent. And it's not like this was like a $200 million stock that went to $800 million. This is a massive company that mm. went from a couple hundred billion to like $1.4 trillion. So uh, how, how can that be that these stocks are doing so well? And it's what I see happening is the wallet share, the, the market share for tech spend is gravitating towards this artificial intelligence. Companies are starting to use generative AI to do data analytics to improve uh, productivity, efficiency, save money, and, and we're just with such at the early innings of this. And so I think it was 12 years ago, 13 years ago, they started talking about big data, that all this data was going to yeah. be, be created. And that was going to look like a hockey stick type chart uh, with more and more just coming about, getting created. And now we, now you're seeing that come to fruition in yeah. terms of tech tech spend uh, and all these companies are taking all this data they're putting on the cloud and they're going to use different artificial intelligence programs and software and designs to figure out how to monetize that data for their benefits. Uh, whether it's outright selling of the data or using all these things that have happened in the past to make better decisions in the future. But we are still at the early stages and the biggest companies that are out there the Googles, the Amazons, especially the Microsofts, are uniquely positioned to benefit from this wallet share shift in technology spend. So you have $4.9 trillion of global te technology enterprise spend. Uh, artificial intelligence makes up 2% of that, roughly. Okay, so for that to go to 5%, that's a meaningful move, especially for companies like NVIDIA. Uh, so um, that to me is what's really exciting because I don't know what's going to happen in the economy. Mm -hmm. Every time the feds raise interest rates like this, something's broke. Okay. And to yeah. think that we're going to have, you know, some sort of soft landing. I mean, I, I, to me, like we don't know what a soft landing is because it doesn't exist. Right. So there's not, there's never been one. And to think that we're going to have one now to me, I mean, maybe, you know, strange stuff happens all the time. I just think it's highly unlikely. So what do I want to look at in that situation? A trend that's going to, a trend that's going to operate independently of the global macro environment. And so that 4.9 trillion in technology spend probably won't go down even in a massive global recession. If it does, it'll be slightly. And if you have something that's going to go from 1% market share to six or 7% over two or three years, it's a massive move and it's going to be very concentrated at the top. So these stocks and these, those, those positions, best position to profit from this are going to do really well, regardless of what all the other stuff that's going on. And so like, I'm, you know, I'm looking to win from, for me, I'm looking to win for my clients. And so that's, that's what I'm focused on right now. Mm. Sam, Michael, I love that you led with AI because the evolution and the timing of where we're at. I mean, I'm excited about talking about. It. I know, I know, I can't, I can't get enough of it. Um, and I think, I, I think this is a good place to call it, Michael, because I know you, you got some things to do too. And thank you for making time for us. But that being said, before I let you go, if somebody wants to continue the conversation or even to learn more about your firm and what you do, what's the best way for them to connect with your team? Yeah, you could just Google Michael Lee Strategy. Uh, or go to michaelleestrategy.com and you click right on there. Um, you know, my email address is on there. There's a button to schedule some time. Um, just feel free to give me a call too. Uh, but that's, that's how you get me right on, uh, right on my website. It's right there. You can also Google Mike Lee Fox business, um, you know, 
a few pictures of my uh, my fat face will probably pop right up there for you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, thank you, Michael. And to the audience, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time with us and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we got many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line. We don't want you to miss anything. So again, hit that subscribe button. Michael, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Look forward to see you at the MicroCap Conference. Awesome, Adam. Thank you so much for having me.